tonight I want to continue the series I've been teaching on kingdom zoology. We have looked at the eagle. We have studied the ostrich. And I started off with the ant. Two Sundays ago, I preached on the ant. A-N-T. The ant. And the scripture told us that we must go to the animals and learn from them. I believe since I started this series, when you see an animal, you pay attention. Even when you see a fly in your room, instead of running away, just pause and study the animal. Some of you, you see flies, then you run away. But we are supposed to learn from them. And in Proverbs chapter 6, and the verse number 6 to 11, in which we studied about the ant, I, there were a few things I need to teach about the ant. So we started off by looking at some very important qualities that we are supposed to learn from. The Bible says in Proverbs 6, 6 to 11, that go to the ant, you sluggard. Other translation says lazy bones. Consider her ways. In other words, pay attention to it. Study it. And be wise. Which, though it has no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. These are very important things as you are reading this scripture that you pay attention to every statement there and every word that is in that scripture, especially when we are told we should study about that animal. Remember that the scriptures we have read before, when I started this series, we realized that there are many things that God did and that he made, including animals, and he told us to go and study from them. And then we also learned that there are many animals that God himself describes himself by. So, for example, Jesus is known as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And then he is also known as the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So, the lamb, the lion, we are told to study from them because why would God describe himself by these terms? Then he describes himself as an eagle. And then there are also many other scriptures by which he uses different animals to describe his personality and himself and we are told to learn from all of these. And the ant, we are told, doesn't have an overseer. And doesn't have a captain or ruler. But provides her supplies in the summer. And gathers her food in the harvest. Take note of summer and harvest. How long will you remember, oh sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Then in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24 to 25, the scripture says, There are four things which are little on the earth. There are four things. They are very, very little on the earth. But they are exceedingly wise. Then he started listing these four things. And he said the first one are the ants. They are a people. <laughs> I thought they are just animals. We are told they are a people. They are not strong. I mean, you can just kill them with even your fingernails. But the Bible says they are exceedingly wise. They are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. And when I started the ants, we will look at four series under the ants because of the very topics that are under the ant. So I said that last time I taught on the ant, we studied it in the context of preparation. Planning, somebody shout planning. So under this, we have learned that they prepare. The next thing they do, if we read Proverbs chapter 6 carefully, is that we see that they also plan. They also plan. You see, there's a great difference between preparation and planning. Because some people can prepare and yet not plan. You see, let me give you an example. 
You know, you can prepare a lot of ammunition and still don't have a plan for the war. The gathering and preparation is part of planning, but planning is not preparation. So somebody can prepare a lot of things, but they don't have a plan. How to really utilize what they have gathered. That's why some people can have a lot of money. They don't have plan for the money. And then they waste the money. Because there's no plan. I mean, two people can come together and say they are in love. That may be preparation. But they don't have a plan for that thing called marriage. No plan. When they get married, they still live like they have not married. Because they don't know how to transition from a single life to a married life. So, there's a big difference. And tonight, the Bible teaches us that the ant doesn't only prepare, they plan. So, the Bible says that they are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. And then when we go back to the scripture in the Proverbs 6, the Bible says, therefore, consider her ways. Consider her ways and be wise. They have no captain. They have no overseer. They provide their supplies in the summer and gathers their food in harvest. This is good planning. And I want us to briefly look at should I do this one before or not? <laughs> planning. Luke 14. Let's look at Luke again. Then I will come and define what the plan is. Are you happy you came tonight? Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 31. You see, you cannot be spiritual and not have a plan. One of the dangers of the modern day Christian is that they think being spiritual means you shouldn't plan. Oh, everything the Holy Ghost will show me. When we get there, the Holy Ghost will show us. The most spiritual person in the entire universe, God Almighty, is a great planner. So you cannot be very spiritual and not be a great planner. If you are spiritual and you are a child of God, you must have a planning mind. You must plan for everything. Nothing will become great and nothing will be exceedingly successful without a plan. So Jesus, the son of God, was teaching and he says in Luke chapter 14 verse 28 to 31. If one of you is planning to build a tower. Old King James says, which of you intending to build a tower will not sit down first and count the cost. Calculate how much it will cost you. That is the beginning of planning. I trust God at the end of tonight, I'll be able to teach you how to plan. Amen. But the Bible says, which of you intending to build a tower will not sit down first and count the cost? Ants plan. They plan their survival ahead of time. They knew that the summertime is a shorter time compared to the winter time. I mean, it's already getting cold, isn't it? The sun is not out as it used to be, and it's not staying on as it used to be. I mean, if we are in summer, July, thereabouts, at this time it can't be dark. It's not yet 8 o'clock. We would have seen the sun, but it's gone. And we're already in November now. So by the time we hit the end of September, that beautiful summer is gone. And the, the ant, for a reason, knows that it's going to be cold and dark from September and then the whole of October, November, December, January, February. Five months. When we hit March and April too, it's not good for him. Even if it is not dark and not too cold, it will be raining, and the sun, it doesn't help an ant, so it won't come out. So you add all of that to it, you realize that the total months 
that is not very favorable for the ant is longer in a year than the ones that are favorable. And so it plans ahead to stock enough for the season where it cannot come out. And it stays underground for all those periods until it is summer. And then they come out again. And when they come out, whilst you are enjoying, they are so wise that they will not waste their time doing those things. They have to gather quickly because they know the winter will soon come. The Bible says, which of you will not sit down first and count the cost? Jesus is teaching here. To sit down means to be yourself. You can't be planning on your feet. You must sit down. That means that you are yourself. That means you are relaxed. Because you need a certain level of relaxation to make good planning. Which of you will not sit down? He didn't just use the words for fun. He didn't say, which of you intending to build a tower will not just plan? He says, sit down. Take note of that. Sit down and plan. Which of you intending to build a ministry will not sit down first and count the cost? Which of you intending to build a marriage will not sit down first and count the cost? Which of you intending to build a business will not sit down first and count the cost? Which of you intending to embark on an academic program will not sit down first and count the cost? Whatever you want to achieve, you must sit down first and count the cost. That is the beginning of planning. And the one who is teaching us is no other than Jesus Christ, the son of God. So you can't be a follower of Jesus Christ and be so clueless and planless. You will not achieve anything. The victory Jesus had on the cross, it was a laid out plan. Well laid out plan. Right from Genesis chapter 3, it's been a well rolled out plan. As soon as man fell, God put into place the plan B. In religious terms, you will call it prophecy. But prophecy in normal everyday English is actually God's plan ahead of time. Don't let prophecy confuse you. Prophecy also means the plan of God which has been planned ahead of time. And when that plan is made known to you, it is called a prophecy of what God intends to do. He has planned the thing ahead. So whatever you want to become, have you planned it? The Bible says, go to the ant and learn. They plan. And Jesus said, if any of you is planning to build anything, sit down first and count the cost. To see if he has enough money to finish the job. If you don't, you will not be able to finish the tower after laying the foundation. And all who see what happened will make fun of you. See, a lot of people have been mocked at somewhere along the line because they started up big, made a lot of announcement and has no plan. And then when there was no plan for delivery, they become the subject of mockery. What plan for what you want to become now? What is the plan? Do you have a plan? Or because all your friends are going here, you too, you are going. The friend you are following may have a plan. You don't have a plan. How are you following someone who has a plan and you are not also in the plan? You don't even know the plan they have for their next move. You have no idea. It's very, very important. We attended school with some people. They came from certain backgrounds. Certain political class and certain well-off people. And I remember there are some sisters in the fellowship who were going out with this. And we called them and said, you have to know what the plan is. Because such children, there is a plan that when they finish this, their parents will take them to America and Britain. Do you know that? Have you really sat down to calculate? Because they are, and all of them, it's, it's not prophecy. It was just that for some of us, we had got some sharp brain to think ahead. And every one of those four girls that we want, it, it all came to pass. It's not like, not, no, we, I don't know, but you have already experienced things. You have friends. You know that these things, this is how it works. I remember one of them, I say, you, listen, forget about this boy. She will listen. I say, listen, the, unless the mother dies, He's not going to marry you. I know the mother very well. 
and you don't belong to the class of children that she believes she could marry his son. She said the Lord will do it. She didn't listen to me. <laughs> At the end of A-levels, when everybody is preparing for uni, the guy too is preparing for uni. As soon as results came out, the parents called him and told him, this is our plan. You are going to the university in the United States of America. And then the mother, the mother has never said anything about the girl or this wife. But that day, he received a stern warning from the mother. This is the end of that relationship with that girl. She's not following you anywhere. This is not the type of woman I want you to marry. Go and focus. That's it. Cut off every connection and link. See, the girl has no plan. The guy, his parents already have a plan for him. So be careful that you don't fall into somebody's movement when you are not part of the plan that has been planned. <laughs> Sometimes the family will be looking at you quietly like that, but you don't know the plan that is in their head. <laughs> May God help you to have your own plan too. Because every good plan factors a plan B in case plan A does not work. That's a good plan. God had a very good plan in place. In case Adam and Eve miss it, I will switch to plan B. I can't fail. I will have to be man to redeem man. So God had a plan B. Every good plan must have a plan A and a plan B. A plan that in such a way that in case I miss this, this will be my option. The Bible says, if you don't, you will not be able to finish the tower after laying the foundation. And all who see what happened will make fun of you. Verse 30. You begin to build but can't finish the job, they will say. Verse 31. If a king goes out with 10,000 men, to fight another king who comes against him with 20,000 men, he will sit down first and decide if he's strong enough to face the other king. Good planning. If you know you are not strong, don't go and poke the nose of someone or the eye of someone who is strong. Don't be like Hamas. <laughs> you don't know the sons of Jacob, eh? When they said they were going to give them an almighty revenge, I think they didn't understand their language. <laughs> the international community thinks that they are just joking and that they are just playing with words. Sons of Jacob. They said they will make no distinction between those, harbor, those who harbor the terrorists and the terrorists. And they will make no distinction between a hospital that harbors the terrorists or any care home that harbors them. So when you have a good plan, you have to think carefully. Before you go and touch someone that you know that when they start reacting, the whole world cannot contain them. Be wise. In Jesus' name. Now you see, planning is so key, which was a very important element of an ant's life. They do good planning. Now every country has a town and country planning department. If you go to Bexley Council, there is a planning department. They plan for the city. They borrow. They plan. They have all every plan there, original plans. They have everything there. If you want to build, you must submit it to them then they will check it whether it fits into the plan or not. That's why you seek planning permission. Because you can't just put anything anywhere without a plan. So buildings always have a plan. 
you will see that even the sewage system, there's a plan. The roads that have been laid, you can ask all the civil engineers. They will tell you that the roads expire. That's why every time you may see some roadworks going on, you wonder what's, what's wrong here. If you come from where we come from, you don't see anything wrong with the road. It's fine. I mean, the road near your house, there's nothing but sometime three, four, five years later, you see them come and scrape the whole road and put a new thing there because the road expires. And they have to remove the top layer and run a new one. Africa, which road will expire? <laughs> the thing, once, once, once we can move on it and there's no portal, it is alive. <laughs> Everything is so laid out. The sewage system, when there's a problem, they know where to go straight. But there are some places, no plan. As soon as it rains, before you realize, all kinds of things are passing through your house. You built on waterways, every, we don't care. Once you tip somebody, just get something. Just allow me to just build here. Meanwhile, all those places from time immemorial is laid out. There's a whole plan. May we be the generation that thinks and plans. Because it looks like the generation before us were great thinkers and great planners. You know, I was talking to some of my cousins in the past and then there was some issue that we were talking about in terms of uh, our small village called Hachu. And, uh, you know, when things are going, I was looking at some of the things and we were talking. I said, this place, and they shouldn't have built here. This place shouldn't have been sold out. This is how they plan. So how do you know? I said, I was with grandpa. So I saw the plan. And what surprises me, and it gives me a lot of things to think about in terms of our generation, was the fact that somebody, my great-great-great-grandfather, sitting down somewhere 1826, sitting with lawyers and planned the whole place. And you see the original plan of the place, it will amaze you what they have produced there today. <laughs> it's amazing. The plan for that whole town. Where schools will be, where recreational grounds will be, where buildings. I mean, you, I look, every time that picture is still before me. And I go back there and I look at what they have done there. And I realize that there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. See, some of these forefathers, they didn't go to school, but they have got wisdom. Then those who came after them to become kings, who have been to school, they have knowledge, but they don't have wisdom. They sell the land and resell it and resell it and everywhere. If you don't go to fight, they will sell the cemetery too. No plan. Then when it starts raining and all kinds of things begin to happen or natural disaster, then you realize there's no plan, no clue. May the Lord help us. People just allow greed to cloud their sense of wisdom. There are some places in the Ashanti region. The, the whole city, the whole town, they have dug under for gold. Giving it to some crazy guys to just be mining the gold. The other day somebody just fell into it. In their own house. He went to use the place of convenience in the house and just fell in. And not knowing there's a whole, egg. I mean, she just goes endlessly to the ground. No plan. May your life not be like that. Buildings always have a plan. There's a plan. You can't have a building you want to build and there's no plan. You must have an architect who will work out the planning, isn't it? Because otherwise you have something built for you. <laughs> By the time they finish, you can't enter. You know, when we talk to professors in architecture or those who are seasoned architects, they will tell you, this drawing, it looks nice, but it is not buildable. 
So it means that you can draw something, but it can't be built. Because there are so many reasons why it doesn't make sense to build that type of building. After you finish building, the people can't enter into it. Because you realize that some stairs, staircases, the way they have tuned, <laughs> it is better you stay away from it. It looks nice on paper, but it doesn't work like that on, on the, on the, practically. So, you know, you can prepare all the building materials. That's what I was telling you about the plan and preparation. You can prepare all building materials. But if there is no plan for the building, it is meaningless. So say, oh me, I'm going to build. Okay. I bought cement, iron rods, all the materials you need. You have prepared them. But if there is no plan, what good are the materials you have prepared? So it means that in your preparation, you must also factor a plan into the preparation. So that after I have gathered, my next plan is to get an architect who will be able to make the drawing. And you work with that architect exactly what you want. So the plan has to be put on paper so that the one who is going to build it will then take it and work with what is there until they produce the thing. So you can gather all building materials as part of preparation, but if there is no plan, that building will not take off. And most of the time, we have confused the two. Now, a very great American one day said, and I quote him here, he says, you can achieve anything you want in this life if you have the courage to dream it, the intelligence to make a realistic plan, and the will to see that plan through to the end. You can accomplish or achieve anything you want in life if you have the courage to dream it, the intelligence to make a realistic plan, and the will to see the plan through to the end. Did you get that one? Are you with me or you are not here? I asked a question, I didn't get any response. I should take it again. Okay, you should have told me that. I asked you, did you get it? Islands. Uh, is that also your plan? <laughs> you can achieve anything you want in this life. Should I pause? Should I continue? All right. If you have the courage to dream it, The intelligence to make a realistic plan, not just a plan, it must be realistic. Some people have some plan, they are not realistic plans. So you can achieve anything you want in this life if you have the courage to dream it, number one. The intelligence to make a realistic plan, number two. And the will to see that plan through to the end. The will. To see that plan through to the end. The reason why many times plans fail is because we lack the third factor too. The will to follow through. So I said you can achieve anything you want in this life. If you have the courage to dream it. You must have the courage to dream. Nobody can arrest you for dreaming. Dream big. God is a big God. He dreamt big. He created this big world so you can dream big. Nobody should be able to get angry at you because you dreamt big. So you can dream big. But after we have dreamt, you can achieve anything you want in life if you have the courage to dream it, the intelligence to make a realistic plan is very important. It means that you cannot have a plan if you are not intelligent. Amen. I mean, when you enter this building, you will see that there is a certain wisdom behind the way things have been designed for you all the way to get into this room. And you could see the wisdom behind why they have got a double door here. That in the event of a fire, we can be able to escape through many doors. So you see that there's a wisdom behind it. There's an intelligence behind it. 
So you can achieve anything you want in life if you have the courage to dream it, the intelligence to make a realistic plan. You have gotten all this now. And the will, the will, the willpower to see that plan through to the end. You must have the courage and the willpower to follow the thing to the end. Many times because there's one or two challenges, then we abandon the plan. We want to start another one again. Learn to follow things through to the end. That is the nature of the God you serve and the nature of the spirit of the God who is in you. He had a plan. He was disappointed a few times, but he had the will to follow it through to the end. Adam and Eve disappointed him. He put in place plan B. He had to call Abraham. Abraham disturbed the thing a little bit, almost nearly disturbed it with the coming of Ishmael. God still had the willpower to follow through and say, it's still going to be an Isaac. Out of the Isaac will come Esau and Jacob and out of the Jacob will have to come Levi, Judah, Simeon, all the others and out of Judah, first out of Levi will come a Moses and then out of Judah will come David and out of David's line will come the Messiah. So it's been a well laid out plan. Things happen along the way to disturb it. Even when it came to the kingship, the plan of God originally was that it must be the king who must come from the line of Judah. Jacob had already prophesied it in Genesis chapter 50 that this is what is going to be the case. The people somewhere along the line became impatient. Give us a king like the other ones. They had to bring someone from Benjamin and that was King Saul. Somewhere along the line he had to mess up until the David had to come. All these things, something happens, but God had the willpower to follow through the original plan. You must have the will to follow through the plan. Amen? So when we talk about planning, we are looking at the strategy by which things are done. The strategy by which things are done or things are accomplished. A plan is a strategy by which things are done and things are accomplished. A strategy. It involves a series of steps to accomplish the thing in the end. It's child of God, if you are truly filled with the spirit of God, you must have a planning mind. In Jesus' name. Every station of your life, there must be a plan in motion. You just can't allow things to just happen. You must have a plan. And the Bible tells us the ants, they have a plan. They have put it together. You see, the word for soldier in the Greek language is stratiotis. Stratiotis. S-T-R-A-T S-T-R-A-T I-O-T-E-S S-T-R-A T-I-O-T-E-S Stratiotis Did you all get that? Out of which we get the English word strategy. It is out of stratiotis that we have the English word strategy. So, as far as the Greeks were concerned, or to go back to the original etymology, that is the study of the root words of names, a soldier, therefore, is a man who, by a superior strategy, outsmarts his enemy and prevails over him. A soldier is, therefore, somebody who by a superior strategy outsmarts his enemy and prevails over him. A soldier is therefore someone, a stratiotis, someone who by a superior strategy outsmarts his enemy and prevails over that enemy. Are we here tonight? So when we see a soldier, a soldier is a master tactician, very strategic. And if you study wars, you will see what I'm talking about. If you don't have any war to study, just watch what is going on between Israel and Hamas. And follow the Jews. You will see strategy. Strategy. 
So, Stratiotis therefore carries the idea of someone who operates by careful planning and therefore does not act on impulse. Someone who operates by careful planning and therefore does not act on impulse. Again, taking you back to Israel Hamas war. Those barbaric guys came on the 7th of October, attacked a country that is on holiday, observing their highest religious holiday as far as the law of Moses was concerned. And you attacked and killed 1,400 in a day. Now, one would have expected that they would start immediately entering the country and bombing, but you realize they waited for three whole weeks, tactically planning strategically planning. And before they will start entering, they send a few special forces first to go and clear some buildings. Then they returned. Then go and clear some buildings. Then they returned. And did that for four days. So that they can have a place where they can move in and land. At the same time, they have already sent some special forces who have gone in already to spy out a few places. And then they start bombing from the skies. It's all part of the strategy before they finally get in. And then when they moved in first, they were able to locate one of their soldiers that had been abducted for the past three weeks and immediately rescued her. That is some people with a plan. They didn't just move on impulse. Yes, they can see the videos. It's getting them angry, but they were planning. They have to sit down and plan and plan how do we get in and how we finally will come out. So for three weeks, it looks like they have come, the soldiers at the border. And CNN keeps on asking silly questions. When are you going to go in? You mean we should tell? And I just love these guys, these Jewish generals. They say, you want me to give you this answer? Hamas people will be watching what we are doing. You wait. When the time comes, you will know. <laughs> but we are not going to tell you. But they have a plan. In the same way, on the other side, the people also planned. That is why they were able to spring a surprise. For two years, they were planning this whole thing. And they had a plan. Their plan was, we will come and cause this damage. We know that we cannot fight these people very well. We don't have the superior air power and the kind of special forces that they have. But if we manage to breach through and they don't locate us and we go and cause this damage, for more than five years, with the help of Iran, they have built a whole city under the city. They have tunnels. So they will go and hide there. And they also are aware of international law that if we build under hospitals, if you bomb the hospital, everybody will be against you. So that in the end, they say, oh, Israel is killing innocent civilians. No, the person who has come to kill your child is hiding in a day nursery and is firing rockets also from there. What would you do? You fold your arms? Eventually, somebody will have to be a casualty. But that means that they too had a plan. Are you following me? Their plan is a wicked plan, but they have also planned their escape and where they will be fighting from. So they fight and put their machinery in the places of civilians. And they know that if you hit that place, the whole world will come against you that you have hit innocent civilians. So it tries to tie your hand behind you. Now what I'm trying to explain to you is that both sides had got a tactical plan. A plan to respond and a plan to attack. Life is war. And if we are told to steady from the ant, I came to submit to you. May you have a plan in mind. Amen. In Jesus' name. So the ants therefore take into consideration the opportunities that summer brings. So that they can strategically make provision for the harsh weather of winter to stay alive. Good planning. Good planning. They take into consideration the opportunities that summer presents. And then, so as to bring and make provisions for the harsh weather during winter. 
What provision are you making towards the winter of your life? Every life has got a summer moment and a winter moment. Good planning, therefore, will help you in the location of the essentials that you will need to enhance the accomplishment of your vision. Good planning will help you locate all the essentials you need, all the materials you will need to help you to accomplish your vision. A good plan takes all that into consideration. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit and not have a plan in life. God had a plan. He even had a plan that if the enemy should attack, if the devil ensures the son of God dies, it will be through death that he will take the power from him. It is still part of a plan. That's why the Bible later on said, if the devil had known that through death, Christ would have collected the power from him, he would not have made people kill him. He didn't know it was a plan of God. That's why an ambush is a plan. You must have a plan. Marriage is not all kisses. There must be plan. Otherwise, you will beg in harvest. Oh, please, look at your scripture. Excuse the scripture. You know scripture? I want to be like my forefathers. Scripture. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 4. You will see that scripture there. <laughs> are you alive tonight? Or you are thinking about a plan? You look too cool for me tonight. Kofu, are you alive? Or you are existing? <laughs> Proverbs 24, are we there? A lazy person will not plow because of winter. Therefore, he will beg during harvest and have nothing. When harvest comes, may you be part of people who also have reaped from what you have labored in. Otherwise, you will beg in harvest. May you not beg during harvest. May you not look like the odd one out during harvest. Academically, what is the plan of making a first class? What is the plan? So that when results come, you don't look like someone begging in harvest. When everybody has harvested a first class, a two-one, what have you harvested? The Bible says when we don't have a plan and we just allow laziness to be our plan, we will have nothing in harvest and we will beg in harvest. What is your plan? What is the plan for the future you want to build? What is the plan? What is the plan for the home that you want to build one day? The marriage you want to build one day, what is the plan? What is your plan? Do you have a plan at all? Or you just uh, everything should just happen as we go along. Some brothers don't even have a plan for proposal. And some sisters too don't have a plan on how to get the gentleman to propose finally or you indirectly propose. You must have a plan. That in case it goes on for a long time because at a point in time, we don't know the nature of the relationship anymore. Because brother John, you are seeing sister Cynthia. We've seen you with her many times. Now you give her lift. <laughs> Every now and then you are by her. Have you proposed to her? No. Do you want to marry her? Silence. Everything, you are quiet. Are you a monetary spirit or a bodyguard now? What, what, what is your level? What, what is your position now? Escorting her? Or you are a monetary spirit? No plan. Sometimes we have to have a plan for such people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have to have a plan for them. You have to put them in a room and talk to them. Talk to the two of them and create a situation by which brother have to open his mouth. 
Sister, you too, you must play along. But what is the plan? You don't have a plan. You must have a plan. Amen. You see, if you let things happen by chance, you will not be able to sustain anything. Because whatever is intentionally birthed will be intentionally sustained. That's why God didn't give women a womb and leave it there. He gave them breasts too. So that when they have the baby, there will be something for the baby to feed on. So he has planned that ahead. He has planned everything ahead. When you leave this place, I know I've, I've given you some assignment to read on the new, on the doing the master's will. But if you can later on when you have some free time, just go through Genesis chapter 1. All the way to verse 26. You see an amazing plan put into motion by this God. We say. So you cannot be spiritual and have a planless life. Check it the way he created. He let the sea came. Then he says, let there be fish. He has put what the fish would dwell in, in place before the fish came. That's why humans were the last to come. After he had brought all beasts and all food that they would eat, trees and everything, he put them all in place before. He said, now I've made enough preparation. Let us make man. So the order of creation itself, a whole plan. As I've always taught you, even that's why he made the sun come before the trees. Then years later, humans could study biology and science and realize that, you know, plants make their food by photosynthesis, but that's with the assistance of the sunlight. So without the sunlight, it has no source of food. So he put the sun there before he says, let the earth produce the trees. What have you put in place for this life that had already been planned for you by God? May we be thinking Christians in Jesus' name. So a plan, the animals had a plan and they've been working it out every summer. So good planning therefore helps in the location of resources. Where are you going to get the resources? That will enhance the accomplishment of your purpose. God has already said in Genesis 8.22 that as long as he lives, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, day and night, summer and winter shall not cease. So the ants, they descend the time ahead. They don't have the sophisticated brain we have, but they could tell when it is winter and when it is summer. And when everybody is enjoying See, summertime can be very tempting. That's why you also feel like, me too, I will take holiday when it's not your holiday. As you see, as you are going to work and you see people lying at the cup, at the park, enjoying, you say, mm, should I go or I should stay? They, what they are doing at the park is part of their plan. For you, is that also part of your plan? You must have an understanding of the times. You can't be a great planner without a sense of understanding. In 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. They have understanding of the times. And they know what Israel have to do. So it's obvious, therefore, that one's ability to seize the opportunity of the moment is determined by one's insight into what time it is. Should I repeat? Today, I'm moving very fast. Yeah, I'm myself now. 
I to preach like, like the way I preach. Sometimes you will slow me down. It is obvious, therefore, that the, your ability to seize the opportunity of the moment is determined by your insight into what time it is. Your insight into what time it is. Your ability to seize the opportunity of the moment is determined by your ability to determine what time it is. Your insight into what time it is. What time are you talking about? What time is it? What time is it? You must know when it is student time. It's time for studies. You must know that this is your moment as a young person. This is your summer time. This season will not be there forever. What are you doing during this season? If you fail to recognize the reason and the time, that insight into the time, you will relax and you would have slept during your summer. What resources are you gathering like an ant during the summer moments of your life? When you have all the energy, when you have all the power, when you have all the opportunity, when you don't have any grandchild, no child, nothing, this is the time to study. Because much as education is not a race, as I said in my example two Sundays ago, if somebody is 77 years old and wants to start a degree, it's not going to be easy. Because that person has children, has wife, has grandchildren. Maybe the whole family itself wants to make him the head of family. So, you know, every time somebody dies, he has to... <laughs> He's going to plan all these things. And on top of this, you are talking Pythagoras theorem. My God, <laughs> he doesn't have the... <laughs> he will be depending on the young ones in class to help him finish the assignment. By the time he will finish the degree, much as he will even accomplish it now, by the age of 80, he, there will not be much he can do with that knowledge at that age. Do you understand? And even applying for a job will be a whole different thing because many companies don't employ certain people at a certain age because you're even post-retirement now at 80. Do you understand what I'm saying? What is the plan? What is the plan? Because if you marry at the age of 50 and you have a child at the age of even 51, by the time the, time the child is 10, you are 61. You'll be going to parents' evening at 61, pushing push chairs when the second child comes and you see, these are all, that is why you must factor all this into the plan. That's why you must plan to marry early. It must be part of the plan. So you finish the ministry of reproduction quickly and then you can plan on so that when you hit your 45s and 50s, you can relax. Am I talking to the church? Kofu, do you understand what I'm saying? Because this suit I'm wearing, it was a suit for somebody here for their wedding and this is now very tight on me. One of these days, when I finish, I'll just give it to the king Charles to take away and go and hang it for me. <laughs> May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Let me drop this quickly and then we can go. Have you been blessed tonight? So don't be very reckless in your life. This is your summertime. Amen. Gather something. This is your summer time. Gather enough. Plan for tomorrow. Plan. Nothing should happen accidentally. You must plan for your retirement plan. Don't say I'm too young. If there are some monies that are coming now, where are you investing it? The scripture itself tells us money has wings. It can fly. Today it comes, tomorrow is gone. 
You only begin to appreciate it after you have wasted it. <laughs> That's when you begin to pray for 20 pounds. You realize, that, hey, where is the 20 today? Where is the 20 today? The 20 you just throw in it somewhere. You just buy certain things. Some of you are buying trainers. Complex ones. The other day I saw one of my sons wearing one and it's also heavy. I told him this is a health and safety risk. <laughs> because if, if an enemy is chasing you now, you can't run, my son. You can't run. I told him you can't run. He said he would take it off and run. I said you, you put yourself at more risk because there are certain things you must be able to jump but you now start thinking about how you'll be injured and the enemy will definitely get you. I said, this thing. You know what I'm talking about. Just say, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what kind of plan is that one too? <laughs> Don't waste the season. In Jesus' name. Plan the time for your rest. Plan it too. Plan it. God planned it. He worked for six days. On the seventh day, he rested. It was a plan. It was part of the plan. Me too, I'm going on holiday because somebody's going. Is that part of your plan? And the holiday you are going, have you calculated how much it will cost you? And when you come back, what bills you have to pay? Is that a good plan? Or some of you have got plans, but they are foolish plans. <laughs> Hamas type of plans. You want to, listen, don't set social media record and you come back and cry in your room. <laughs> Say what is going on, I'm going to also take pictures. <laughs> and come and show. You go and come back with the bills. The bills will be waiting for you. Sometimes you don't need to do certain things. Plan it ahead. You are not a fool. You have a plan. That's the difference. Be like the ant. Maybe other animals will see them. Mosquito will be laughing. Hey, look at ant. Me, I'm just flying, flying. You, you can't fly. When this summer, I look at how we are enjoying. What are you doing? You guys, I see you all on that one line carrying some white substance on your lips and you are all busy moving like that. Mosquito, somebody will just slap you to his face and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you are laughing at an aunt. What is your plan? You don't have a good plan for escape when you have gone to suck somebody's blood. You too, you are laughing at an aunt. May God help us. Number one, involve God in your planning. Involve God in your planning. So I'm not saying don't go on holiday. I'm not saying don't take a break. But what I'm saying is that let it be a plan. Much as it is good to take time off to rest, one will have to match expenditure against income, savings, and investments. To know, am I actually working, getting all this money only to go and waste it in an enterprise called holiday? Just so that it will be on record that I also went to which of the islands you want to go? Where? Dubai. Look at your nose like Dubai. <laughs> Kevin, I trouble him too much. <laughs> I'll stop when you get married. <laughs> Have you much income against expenditure? <laughs> Proverbs chapter 20 verse 18. Plans are established by wise counsel. So involve God in your planning. The Bible even tells us in Psalm 37. 
that commit your plans to the Lord, then he will bring it to pass. Do you have a plan? So your prayer topic is it cannot just be anything. You must have a plan you take to God. Amen. And the reason why we involve God in the plan is that good planning takes into consideration the past, present, and future. That's why I told you there has to be a wisdom behind the plan, a plan B. As humans, we are limited. We only have knowledge of the past and present. We don't have the total knowledge for the future. But there's one whom we serve and whose we are, who is already in the future. So you commit the plan into God's hand and involve him so that he will inspire the future into you. That's why when he takes a decision, we struggle with him. Because we take decisions based on knowledge we have yesterday and today. But when God takes a decision, he takes into consideration the body of knowledge yesterday, today, and the next 10 years, the next 20 years, the next 100 years. He's already there. So when he plans like that, sometimes we go through things and we don't know what is going on. But God is already in the future. So when we involve him in the plan, he has a way of inspiring some ideas and telling us, put this here. You will see the reason why I ask you to put it here when the future comes. Amen. Number two, you have to ask yourself this question. What do I want to accomplish in my life? What do I want to accomplish? You can't have a plan without knowing what you want. So you must have what you want. What do I want to accomplish? In all the three areas of your life, your spiritual life, what do you want to accomplish in your spiritual life? What do you want? Then you can put a plan in place to achieve that. So it's a question you must ask. Your vision. You must have a vision. And so what do you want to accomplish? What kind of person do you want to be in the next 10 years? What kind of income do you want to have within the next 5, 10 years? How many children do you want to have? It's an important question to start asking now. Amen? I know it's five. Is it five? Oh, three. I thought it's five. Release the other, then it becomes five. It's easy. <laughs> but it's possible it can be five. I mean, when you say three, it means three visits to the labor ward, and you can come with three children. First one, twins. Second one, twins. Then you let the last one come. Three visits, five children. <laughs> Number three. Ask, how do I get there? You are now planning. You are sitting down and planning. That is what we call strategic planning. Stratiotis. How do we get there? How do we get to Gaza? With all the booby traps and all the tunnels. And the fact that a Hamas fighter can appear from a tunnel anywhere and ambush all of you. How do you get there? So it takes some time to strategize and plan. And realize that we've got the air force. We have to use air power for a long time and bomb a lot of the ground before our troops start moving in. And they have to plan to say we have to send special forces. Not just ordinary soldiers first. The, the ordinary infantry, they will come later. But special forces, they, they are trained to fight in tunnels, like the Navy SEALs and all those people. They have to send them to go and kill Osama Bin Laden. They only send only 12. Can you imagine? 12 men. They entered the house of the chief terror of the whole world. Entered the country with, with some powerful helicopters that cannot be detected by Pakistani radar. And these are dangerous men. And they executed. No one died and came back. Now, these are well-trained guys. It is part of a plan. A country has such people in place. So what is your plan? What, 
How do I get there? How do we get where we want to be? If you don't have the answer to this question, your plan will have to wait. You must know how you want to get there. And you must seek advice, seek counsel, research, find out, prayerfully consider, but that question must be answered. How do we get there? Oh, I'm in love with you the way your nose is looking. That is fine. But then how do we get married? How? Where do we live? And how do we support ourselves? Don't quote me scriptures at this point. (laughs) So spiritual brothers, Lady Franklin ask you, so so how are we going to live? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Whilst we look not at things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Where would we live? Kabayaso, prata kabahaya. Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of God, the Son of Man, has nowhere to lay his head, brother. We will move on. So what would we eat after we marry? Makusi brato kadabahaya. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Almighty God. <laughs> you need to pull that guy's head. <laughs> Say, sit down, let me talk to you. <laughs> Your brain needs to be reset to factory settings. <laughs> <laughs> Even Jesus had a treasurer. <laughs> so you have to ask, how do we get there? Number four. What and who do I need to help me get there? What and who do I need to get me there? Amen. What and who do I need To help me get there. What do I need to get there? A degree? A training? An apprenticeship? Some knowledge? What do I need to get there? What? The what is important. Then who? Because in life, we will need someone to help us get somewhere. So who do we need? No matter what you want to be in life, there's someone who has been there already. And you need to connect with that person and contact that person and seek that answer. Who do I need to help me get here? You may need a mentor. You may need a counselor. You may need some support. You will need someone. And who? And what? Money. And if it's money, how do we make money? Don't tell me we have to steal. Some armed robbers were arrested in Nigeria. Nigeria, forgive me. (laughs) When they were caught, they said they should be allowed to go. I mean, the church needs money for building project, and that's why they came to steal this. These are people by faith, some kind of faith. (laughs) They are ready to risk anything. They are general versus how to go and build and say they didn't send them to do this. Finally, am I willing to pay the price to get there? Nothing comes free. Nothing great is achieved without pains and labor. Am I willing to pay the price to get there? You must answer that question. In other words, commitment. Do you have the commitment? To see it through. Everything you dream of. Everything you want to achieve. There is a price to pay. You ready to pay that price. To get there. If we have to grow. A big church. There is a price to pay. If you have to develop a ministry. There is a price to pay. If you have to build. A home. There is a price to pay. If you want to have a good marriage, there is a price to pay. 
Everything you want to achieve, there is a price to pay. Are we willing to pay that price? You must answer that question. Because if you are not willing to pay the price, you will only dream, but you will never see it happen. At any time, anybody who has had a child, they'll tell you, you can desire to have a child. But when it is time for the baby to come out, it will come out with pain. Are you ready to pay the price? Or you want the baby to be kept inside for 10 years? It can't work that way. It must come out. Yeah, one member of the church, she said, Bishop, pastor, it's okay. At that time, I wasn't bishop. I said, pastor, it's okay. Tell them I don't want the baby anymore. They should put the baby back in. I said, the baby's head is already out. He said, it's too painful. I can't take it anymore. He said, no, you must allow it. You must try your best. Try your very best. Try! It's a price to pay. If you want to excel academically, there is a price to pay. Tonight, I have come to speak to you as your pastor. May we learn from the ant. The ants have planned all of this. So for about six months, they can stay underground and they'll never go bankrupt. They have enough. And when it is summer, they even have enough to be eating because everything they are gathering in summer is not for them to consume at that moment. It's part of the plan for the future. To may the spirit of God who gives wisdom anoint you with wisdom. Wisdom.